I'm Robin, I'm the flame artist at Youngster. Um, I thought we'd just give a, a little bit of um, background. We started in 2016 and we can offer 2D, 3D, VFX, online editing and colour. We got Baselight in August uh, last year. Um, we've got now 20 odd suites that can then drive that, drive that business through Baselight. The nice thing about that BLG pipeline is that we can Nothing's baked in, it's all got a fluid and you can always have that feedback coming back and change that grade at any time with a real minimal fuss. The main work we do at Youngster is um, commercials. Um, so what we've got is Jim is going to take you through um, how he approaches that particular discipline and show you what he does. So over to you Jim. So I thought I'd show you a couple of pieces of work they're very short, just to show you what I mean. So for example, this is a car commercial I did a couple of months ago, so. It's got, it's got some color, but it's fairly naturalistic, really. There's a lot going on, but it's not, it's not obvious. This was for Mulberry, the fashion label, and this was actually for an, for an installation in their stores. And obviously it's much more, much more strong in terms of the grade. It's, it'd be pretty unusual to do a grade this strong on a, you know, a television programme or even a feature. So it's, that's, that's why I love doing commercials, because you get, to, you get to really experiment and you really get quite a lot of creative input. I'm just going to talk briefly about my approach to grading. Um, I don't really use print LUTs or anything like that. They're very popular with commercials colourists. I tend to find them limiting and I prefer to do to actually grade. Quite often when you use print LUTs, your, your highlights and your blacks get very compressed and you end up fighting it. So I prefer not to use them. I do, however, use what I refer to as transformation LUTs. So I don't use Rec 709 LUT. I have my own. So I've, I've made my own LUTs for, for different types of camera. Obviously in our job, it's a big part of it is knowing your different, your different formats and the different, different characteristics. Like Alexa tends to be green in the mids. A lot of, uh, getting a lot of Sony Venice work now tends to be quite blue in the blacks, I find. So I've got my own, my own LUTs that get, get the uh, material to a place without destroying it. So that's my, that's my Alexa LUT working on this material. So that's the, that's, the, that's the raw. So my LUT gets it to there, essentially. And then I work through it and under it, depending on what, what, what the, uh, the task is. And then secondary shapes, keys. The beauty of base light is it's just, to my mind, it's the most intuitive system because for me, layer-based systems make sense. I, I've never been able to deal with nodes. Um, it's just, I just find it confusing. I like layers. You know, if I need to do something at the top of the stack, I just go in there, new layer, you know? And the same at the bottom, it just makes sense to me. It's so easy to key in base light. Pick an area and key it, obviously, when you're on your D key. And then you've got hue angles as well. It's, it's, it's just, it's very simple. So in the past, you would use LUTs. You'd have shot LUTs, you'd have different LUTs for certain setups, and those would be passed to the, to the effects guys, perhaps. The beauty of BLGs is you can have the entire grade stack in there. So, you know, all your, all your secondary grade, grading tools, all your shapes, all your keyframes, it's all in the BLG. It's a tiny file, so there's no, no need to render anything. The same with the, uh, with the editors. The editors love being able to show, the, show a grade while they're in the edit, which is, which is quite, quite revelatory these days. You know, they have Rec. 709 LUTs, of course, but those are often quite, quite ugly, you know, and now they can give me their rough cut. I can do a, a pretty decent grade on it and then pass that back to them. And the beauty of it is, there's a tool called the Lens in Avid. I don't know if, any, if they mentioned that this morning they were talking about Avid. But it's great because you can apply it to a, a timeline in Avid and even if the shots change or move, you can, it, it will still find the grade. And you can retract shapes, you can, you can change the grade even and send it back to me and say, oh, we tried this, what do you think? Editors can, can show cuts with a grade on rather than it being log or Rec. 709 all the way up to the grade, the final grade. It's brilliant for clients because they can, pr they can present to their clients, you know, so the product client, for example, very early on, they can show something with a really good, really good look on it. Whereas without the BLG workflow, you know, it's, they're, they're tied to either a LUT or, or the log. 
but I'm finding more and more people want to people are really happy to have the grade on because you know it, it, their, their client can be really happy really early on and it just then it becomes more collaborative and the, the final grade never has to be baked in until 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 the very end you, you can change it at any point also without having to render anything it just practical things like it saves on massively on disk space you're not constantly rendering out frames when when Rob is working on a shot it doesn't have to come back to me and be graded and then rendered out and then dropped in you know we'll just update the BLG and th that, that's it essentially that is a massive advantage saves massive amounts of time saves on resources and it's just brilliant it's important that metadata is preserved so what often happens if I go to uh, this scene here so so you take metadata when you can form up in, in, in an EDL it usually takes the tape name from the EDL. So what we discovered was sometimes the flame wouldn't, wouldn't match the BLGs because it works purely on tape name metadata and timecode. So if, if you go to the actual file, the actual metadata tape name is actually first for last for in this case. Quite often editorial will, will replace that with the full uh, 20 character name because it, it is a better indication of what the shot is but then the blame will be looking for the eight character. So you can change that just in the shots window. So. Yeah, so it's interesting that, you know, um, why we have to do that is because the flame will, re will just read the files itself and not refer to the EDL, where the difference is. The base light is taking the tape name from the EDL, and if that's not matching up with the metadata of the file, that can break your kind of pipeline. Another great new feature, fairly new feature in base light is, is the, uh, you can actually use shaders that are normally only found on a, on a, on a flame. So here I've keyed a skin. So that's using a, a croc beauty shader, which is a, which is a uh, tool that is used in flame. So the lines are starting to blur a little bit between some of the tools you can use. And um, it's good, it helps the collaboration between me and Robin, so for example, we had a job that was very noisy and we found that his, his noise reduction worked really well on it. So again, the, the whole BLG workflow going between, between the, two, the two rooms helps massively because it saves so much time and there's just no rendering involved, which is, which is just great. Um, yeah, so we're very much a sort of divide and conquer um, outfit between, uh, between me and Jim. Um, the ability to use those matchbox shaders really is quite quite a key thing as well you know sometimes we'll find that these issues will come up in color where they're seeing the skin is not as as great as they want it to be um, and you know depending on the time allotted uh, between myself and Jim we'll come up with a game plan to to then fix that situation um, sometimes I've only got a day or two to work on something and things have stacked up and it's going to be a case of well Jim, can you take care of that? And, and I f also find that sometimes uh, base light has a, a really good keying um, tool that sometimes surpasses flame. Um, so you can get to a, a really good key on something that I'm possibly struggling on. So it's very much talking together, um, speaking about what's been said in Jim's room, what's been said or what conversations I've had, and just coming up with the best way of achieving the solution of a, a fantastic looking commercial, I suppose. Um, it's great for clients as well because now at Youngster we've got everything under one roof so clients can come in and they're, they're slowly starting to realise that you know for, for jobs that aren't massive uh, VFX jobs you know obviously we're too small to handle things that need an army of compositors mm -hmm. or whatever so as long as the job isn't, isn't like of that type clients are, are starting to realise that you know they can do their editing their online and the grading all, all in the one place and you know that, that that's really good for them because it's cost savings and also they just feel like they're looked after and it's more personal. Yeah to add to that um, is I'm finding more and more that I'm being pulled into the editing um, stage and helping with comps where they can't achieve what they want to in Avid and you know it, it does help to sell that to the agency's clients. Being able to also walk in and just advice on how long a shot might take to, to comp in VFX is valuable to them as well. If they haven't got the time or the budget to, 
do two or three days on one sh on one shot, then they're going to have to look at another option within the edit and see what they've shot and see if they can get round it that way. Quite simple enough. If we've got no gremlins, so what I've got here is Jim's treat well job here. Um, this is just the raw files, no grade, uh, just conformed up. Um, what I find is quite useful is that quite often when I was working with graded plates and things like that, I would often kind of refer back to the raw plates because sometimes you can get a better key, um, things aren't pushed so, so much. Um, so quite often I was doing two conforms anyway um, of raw and, and the graded plates. Um, just to have those elements to help me with my comps. Um, what's lovely about this, um, so what I'm going to show you here, sorry, is the, um, is the timeline. And this works very much, very similar to the lens that Jim was talking about earlier. We have this conform. I'm literally just going to put a timeline effect on top um, using Pybox, which is Flame's way of reading Python scripts. You can see at the top, we've got BLG option. We just select that, and there we go. Hey presto, we've got a B it's reading the BLGs. Now, what the BLG plugin does is that it actually remembers where where you've pointed it to. So, having done this earlier, you can um, you can see that it's remembered where to look at. If I if you needed to select another folder or anything like that, this you work from sort of left to right in Flame. If you go select folder, you can see there, there's all my BLGs sitting in there and it looks at the metadata underneath, reads, reads that and what's nice in the days of LUT, you used to have to put an individual element over each shot. Uh, with this, it will change the grade because of the metadata underneath, it's one simple action. So if we just go back in, um, you do have a couple of little options here. You can jam it just as source time codes or re read tape and source. But if your pipeline and metadata is preserved, that's, that's the one you want to have it on. Um, there is a fuzzy tape match, which sometimes gives you some options. And then you've also got the color spaces as well. That's contained within the BLGs, um, but if you needed to change it for whatever reason, you can change that over. And you've got your output, which we're going to seven eight, rec 709. If you needed to, you can burn in the information there. There's another way of reading PLGs, and that's how we, how we comp in Flame, is uh, via a, a section called Batch. So I've just exported a shot there, so I can put that into Batch. Just drop that in there, and then we will pull out a node, and there's our Pi box. Now, if we have a look at that, we're going to see unable to apply base light. Don't panic. Here we go. We've just got to take that information and apply that to this node here. So we'll hold T and tap the source information. If we go back, there we go. We're back up. And there's our, there's that applied. One last thing as well that Jim, and I forgot to mention about the timeline, is that more often than not, the edit will change. And it may just change by a couple of frames or something like that. Um, no need to panic, really, because what you can do is just extend your frames out. And depending on what handles Jim has graded to, you can extend it to, you know, if we generally work with 25 or 50, depending on, um, for the grade, that is. So if it's Jim has worked to 25 frame handles, so I can extend it to 25 frame handles all the way across. And it just saves so much time, effort, and data, really, all, mm -hmm. all, all, all the way along the um, pipeline. The Avid uses the, uses, uh, the Avid plugin, which uh, has more options. You can, you can set it to just a time code only. And also, as I mentioned, you know, on, on your Avid timeline, you can move shots like, many, like a whole second, and it will still find the grade. With the Flame, it's, it's stricter. You have to have that time code there, or else it won't apply it. So yeah, you, you need to put handles on the shots. Flame will only read it for the, the amount of handles that Jim has worked to. Oh, that's it's, what it's we found. Strict. Take name and time code. Yeah, I believe that Avid is Avid is has um, a more interactive GUI where you can actually extend those things as well. On the Avid one, you can go, go through mm. the grade stack and everything. And uh, I think it's stricter with Flame because it's a finishing tool. There's a lot of trust involved as a colorist if you're giving people BLGs because mm. you know you, you're not sitting in the room with them when, when it gets applied. 
so you, you're not checking it in that way. Obviously, you, you give a frame of DPX for, the, for, for, the, for each one that, that the, uh, the other op operator can use as a comparison. But you know, it's, there's, a, there's a certain amount of trust involved, um, and if you, you, know, you can always insist on having a final pass. What happens sometimes is certain directors and DOPs will have their own LUTs. If they bake them into the offline files, then the AVID pipeline goes out the window, really, because you need it to be flat. So we're, we're always trying to encourage people and say, look, if you've got LUTs, don't, don't bake them in. But uh, yeah, D DOPs like this because they, they can get involved and they might not, quite often nowadays, they can't make the grade because they're busy. So you can, you can get the DOP in when you have a, when you have a spare bit of time and they, you can do a look with them pre the grade which is great and that, that can be that can be taken into the AVID so it's, it's, it's great flexibility. It starts that conversation earlier as well you know so mm -hmm. by having uh, colour a little bit is being a lot more flexible as, as, and you can start it as the offline stage starts um, it can also free up a bit of time for the VFX as well. Uh, also with with you know sometimes editors will discount large chunks of rushes because the weather changed, it looks too dark, etc. You know, that, that happens quite a lot. With this, you know, an editor can just phone me up. If I've got a spare half hour, I'll look at those shots and they might find they're actually usable and then I can just give them a BLG for those shots and they can, they can show that to their clients and it's all just instant, really. Yeah, well, you, you just have to have a, a sensible naming convention for, for your files and what we tend to do is on the, on the server where they sit, We'll just the name of the folder they'll go into will be the date and the name of the EDL, and then you know as long as you name it sensibly and you know intuitively, then Rob will know where to pick them up from. I, th I think for me it's um, definitely time. Um, you know, one of our th one of the things is just creating time so you can spend more time on the on the nice stuff than the comps. Um, so if you can just get those the menial tasks of a conform out of the way um, quickly uh, that's pretty good so you can do this up ahead of time so before they've even done the grade you can start working on that on some shots uh, I'm not waiting for a graded plate to then start work on when that great when that edit changes if it's only changing slightly you know I can just extend those handles it's not a reconform for me I'm not having to re conform rows and graded plates um, it's just a, a big time saver and with that, you get a lot of data saving as well. You know, you're not filling up the machine or servers with extra plates, um, which can be huge files. You know, um, you know, mm. we're going up to 8K red files, and, and you know, yes, we may have to just transcode those down to 4K. But it's it, what you're trying to do is just save yourself a, a lot of data and, and time there. <laughs> Thank you.